Welcome to the heart of the Andes, where culture and nature merge into an unforgettable experience. In this video, we'll explore the top 10 best things to do in Quito, Ecuador. From stunning historical sites to thrilling outdoor adventures, this enchanting city has something for everyone. Number 10. El Panicillo. El Panicillo is a hill that resembles a small loaf of bread, hence the name Panicillo. This hill is about 3,016 meters above sea level and is commonly used as an observation area as tourists get a 360-degree view of Quito. On top of this hill, there is a majestic sculpture of La Virgen del Panicillo, or La Virgen de Lagarda. The 41-meter tall aluminum statue of Virgin Mary was inspired by the Virgin de Quito. The statue is the largest of its kind in the world, it was built using 7,000 pieces of aluminum. Number 9. Santo Domingo. The driving distance from Santo Domingo to Quito is 132 kilometers. The town is also referred to as Santo Domingo de los Colorados. This fairly large town is one of the newer towns in Ecuador. Santo Domingo offers a wide range of facilities to visitors. There are a number of nightclubs and malls that cater to the needs of every shopaholic. The latest addition to the malls is La Venica Quito Mall. There are also a couple of restaurants that offer a wide variety of cuisines and local dishes. Number 8. Capilla del Hombre. Any culture vulture who is visiting Quito needs to make their visit complete by making a day trip to La Capilla del Hombre. This building was designed by Guayasaman and its construction began in 1995, ending in 2002 after his death. This chapel is a purpose-built museum that contains more than 4,500 artifacts that depict the history of the people of Latin America. Come and see the attractive scriptures and murals that are integrated into the surroundings. Number 7. Pululahua Volcano Crater. Pululahua's last eruption happened about 2,500 years ago and resulted in a crater that is full of fertile soil. This makes the crater one of the only two that is cultivated by its 120 inhabitants. In the middle of the 34 square kilometer crater lays a lava dome which is 500 meters high. The dome is covered in lush cloud forest vegetation and offers excellent views from the summit. Pululahua in Quichua means, smoke of cloud of water. The name came about due to the fog that covers the crater every day at around noon. Technically, it never rains in Pululahua so the fog provides the water for the crops grown here. Number 6. Paso Shoa Forest Reserve. This forest reserve features a vast range of trees, ferns, orchids, and a wide variety of bird species. The main reason for the reserve's preservation is the uneven surface, which can make accessibility a challenge. The forest was declared a protected area in the year 1982 and later declared a wildlife refuge in 1996. Today, the Paso Shoa Forest Reserve is one of the few remaining original Andean forests. The Paso Shoa is run by Fundacion Natura which is in charge of all the conservation projects and research projects. Number 5. Iglesia de la Compañía de Jesus. The church's Spanish name directly translates to, the Church of the Society of Jesus. It's usually referred to as La Compañía by the locals. According to most observers, this church is the most beautiful in South America. This church and most of the nearby buildings were constructed around 1741. In 1781, Iglesia de la Compañía de Jesus was damaged in a fire and later by an earthquake, in 1882. La Compañía is well known for its large central nave which well decorated using wood carvings, gilded plaster, and gold leaf. This church makes for an ideal day trip for those looking to get in touch with their spiritual side. Number 4. Cotopaxi National Park. The massive Cotopaxi National Park at the most visited national park thanks to its spectacular setting, it has rocky mountain trails, sweeping plains, and glassy lagoons. The national park covers an area of 33,393 hectares. Are you ready for an outdoor adventure? If yes, you definitely need to make the trip to this park which is located about an hour or so from Quito. The park is roughly 53 kilometers south of the Ecuadorian capital. This stunning park has a fascinating history in addition to its beautiful natural setting, which offers tourists a remarkable experience. Number 3. Kilatoa Lagoon. This lagoon was formed as a result of the collapse of a now extinct volcano whose 3 km wide and 250 meters deep crater was filled with water. The volcanic mountain collapsed about 600 years ago after a catastrophic eruption which was followed by a period of dormancy. 
The lagoon waters are green in color, thanks to the dissolved volcanic minerals. The surface of the lake is located 3,500 meters above sea level. Situated about a three-hour drive from the southwestern end of Quito, Kilatoa is a common day trip destination that is growing in popularity. Expect nothing short of spectacular views and unending photo opportunities. Also, do not forget to bring a bottle of water and wear comfortable shoes if you plan on taking a walk around the crater. Number 2. Park Bicentenario. This modern park is the second largest in Quito, covering an area of 200 acres. Having only been inaugurated on the 27th of April 2013, Park Bicentenario is located in the area previously occupied by the old Mariscal Sucre Airport. The park is at 2,800 meters above sea level. The former runway is what makes the park's design so beautiful. It has now been painted and converted into a recreation site which comprises play structures for kids and lanes for cycling. Within the park, there are more than a thousand trees as well as a man-made pond. Number 1. La Mitad del Mundo. This enormous trapezoidal monument commemorates the exact location where Charles Marie de la Condamine, an explorer of French origin, calculated the Earth's equatorial line in the 18th century. The name translates to, the middle of the world. La Mitad del Mundo is Quito's tourist mecca. Visitors come here to take pictures at the equator, where the northern and the southern hemispheres meet. This popular destination is always crowded, so be prepared, especially between June and September. There's an elevator that goes up to the top of the monument. This allows you to have great views of the surroundings. The great thing about the 30-meter tall monument is that it's accessible to everyone. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel for more exciting travel content. Thank you for joining us on this incredible journey through Quito.